everybody welcome back to my channel so a few days ago I did a big shop on Amazon there's a lot of things that I really needed to rebuy art supplies that I've run out of and also there's loads of new things that I've really been wanting to test out lately so I thought I'd just do it all in one go I ordered everything together and so everything's arrived I've got like eight packages behind me that I need to unbox and so I thought it'd be really fun to actually unbox them and show you guys what I got and kind of talk about some things that I commonly use all the time and also things that I'm going to be testing out on my channel very soon so anyway guys let's get into it okay so I want to start by opening the biggest box first I'm pretty sure I know what's in here I think it's the portfolio case that I ordered so I have a portfolio case but it's quite a small one it doesn't fit any of my larger paintings in so I wanted to get one that was a bit bigger so it's a2 size and I think I got one that was leather as well so it's a really nice quality portfolio case all of these items that i've bought where i like the links for where i got them from are in the description as well so this is a premium portfolio from artway and you can just see the pattern it's very nice padded i think i also got it with some sleeves as well so like portfolio display sleeves Let's see if they're inside, they might be separate. Yeah, so it's just got the ring binders and I suppose a strap in case you wanna carry it and take it with you places. Yeah, so I got just a couple of display sleeves. I was so surprised how expensive these things actually are. For like a pack of five, it's like 10 quid or like 15 pounds. They're so expensive, even though they're just like large poly pockets. They're just really nice quality. So now I can organise all of my artwork because at the moment all of my art is just either dumped on top of my printer or just like in a suitcase, like loose or like in one of these. Okay, so moving on to the second largest box. This one is really heavy, so I think this has got quite a few bits in it because a lot of them was packaged like in one eye, like in one package. Okay. So the first thing that I got was I wanted some more watercolours, so I decided to go for the slightly cheaper ones. The ones I use at the moment are the Winsor & Newton Professional range, but I decided to go for the cheaper alternative which is the Cotman watercolours. And these are meant to be really good, and so I wanted to just, just try them. They have like more colours in, they have 45 half pans. And I just wanted a larger range of colours which are a bit cheaper because I do a lot of watercolour paintings but I don't necessarily sell the originals that much so I just make a lot of prints of them. Let's see what it looks like then. I really like the packaging, I really like the white case, the fact that it's got this nice sort of gold logo on it. It's quite a big case as well, a lot of different palette space to mix the colours and I like that they're all wrapped individually that I don't have to that they're not like just out I like the fact that they're wrapped up so they're more protected but yeah I'm really excited to test these out they look really nice lots of different colours in there so also to go with that I got another like palette a folding one so that I have more space to like mix colours in and to like mix larger quantities of the same colour because at the moment I just have the circular wow ones rather than bigger sort of spaces to actually mix the colours. This was quite cheap, it's just a couple of pound but they're just like handy to have. And I also got some paint brushes, I've got some more paint brushes in the other packages as well. At the moment I just have quite cheap paint brushes they're not really things that I've invested a lot of money in and I definitely think a paintbrush and the type of paint brushes you have can really make the difference in a watercolour painting and the kind of effects you can get so I wanted to go for some more sort of expensive ones so they're the black velvet and the company is silver I think so I got a few different sizes this is the number six I'm hoping these are really good. I watched some reviews on them and they seemed really nice. So at the moment there's the size 2 and the size 6. Obviously the 2 is slightly finer and smaller than the 6. So one thing that I've bought a lot of in this sort of art supply haul is I've got a lot of paper. So be prepared to see a lot of new sketchbooks. I mentioned in previous videos that I really want to get into sketching. 
So I've ordered lots of different sketchbooks for different sort of purposes that I want to use them for. I've bought like a practicing sketchbook and like a slightly nicer one for more finished pieces of work. Okay, so the first one is a moleskin sketchbook. These are really, really popular. And this is ideal for classic sketching and drawing with pencils, pastels, charcoal, fountain pens and markers. So this was just like the generic sketchbook that I got. Pages are really nice. They seem thick enough for what I want it for. There is, see how many pages? There's... No, it just says the weight. 96 pages. And it is £111. It's like paper, the weight of it. So I also got some Strathmore Bristol Smooth Surface Paper. 20 sheets in here. This is the 300 series. Commonly, I use the 500 series. And that is called Plate Surface Finish. But I wanted to get some cheaper ones because... For a lot of my tutorials, I'm just doing the artwork for the like Patreon tutorials. So it seems a bit of a waste to use really expensive paper for something that I'm just doing for the purpose of a tutorial. And this paper will be fine as well. It's just going to be the same sort of thing. As long as it's smooth surface, it does the job. So 20 sheets of this comes out a lot cheaper. Really nice and smooth. What's the weight on this? £100 weight. So that's thick enough. I've also bought some more A3 Polly Pockets for my other portfolio case. Okay, so I thought I would try out some cold pressed watercolour paper. I haven't used any cold pressed paper in the past, but for my animal watercolours, I think it would be really nice to use cold pressed paper. I really like the effects people get with it. So I went with the Arches cold pressed £140 12 sheets and it's 9 by 12 inches. It's a, it's not a block, it's just you can just pull the sheets out individually. I found that the block was a lot more expensive than just getting it with the sheets in, so I thought I'd just go for the cheaper option. So I'm really excited to test this out and see how different it is compared to the hot pressed Archer's watercolour paper, which is what I use all the time. And so another sketchbook that I got was the Mixed Media Toned Grey. And I got the Mixed Media because the sheets were thicker than just the normal like toned grey paper. I really wanted the work that I do with my markers not to bleed through the pages. And I wanted it to be a bit more substantial. So I decided to go for the thicker one. Like I said, 15 sheets, nine by 12 inches, and it's 184 pounds. So that is really, really thick. It's a nice warm grey as well. So let's feel how thick these are. These are really thick. Can you see that? You'll probably hear by the sound that it's actually really thick. I'm really excited to try them out. I want to do like more sketches that are just like black and white because with my marker ones, I think I really like the effect where it's just black and white, just using a black polychromous pencil, white charcoal, and just using that, just those few supplies, I think it's really effective. Okay, so this is the last of the large boxes and then it's just more single item packages. So here's one of the sketchbooks. This was the cheapest of the sketchbooks. This is one that I really just wanted for practicing and sketching. So I wanted one that has a lot more sort of sheets in it. It's very canvas-like, as if you could paint your own sort of design on the front and on the back, which I think is really, really cool and a nice little touch if you want to kind of custom design your sketchbook covers. Or you could even just leave it white so it looks nice and clean. So it looks fine just as it is. So I also did get another Archer's Hot Pressed pad. I got the larger size because I use this quite a lot for like bigger drawings and like coloured pencil pieces as well as watercolour artwork. So I got the A3 size paper, 12 sheets of this and it is I think £140 as well, just like the cold pressed. And again, this isn't a block, it's just the sheets that you can pull out. So I also got some pastel pencils. So another white pastel pencil. I couldn't find charcoal pencils, so I just thought the white pastels would work just the same for the sketches that I do. And I also got 
a mechanical pencil. So this is by Faber-Castell. It is a 0.5mm lead mechanical pencil. And I just thought I'd get this because, oh, it has lead in it as well. I didn't expect that. So I just thought I'd get this because I really like mechanical pencils. I think they're a lot more accurate for your drawings. I think you can get really nice precise lines and I like that you can refill the lead and you don't have to sharpen it like you do with the wooden casing. These next two things are the things that I'm most excited about throughout this whole art haul and these are new things that I wanted to test out. So a lot of you guys have been asking me and telling me why I don't do, asking me like why don't you do pastel pencil work or you should do work with pastels. And I've wanted to for a long time but I wanted to look into what ones I wanted to get and the paper and stuff. So I decided not to go for the Caran d'Ache pastels because they're very expensive and I'm sure they're amazing quality but because I'm not sure yet whether I would like using pastels I didn't want to go for them straight away because they were like £250 and that's a lot to spend if you don't even know if you're going to like using them. So they're probably something that I'm going to invest in once I'm positive that I enjoy working with pastels. So instead I went for the Stabilo Carbothello pencils these were 60 pastels and they cost like 60 pound so that's a significant difference in price and these are pencils that a lot of the professionals use as well so I thought they must be good enough quality and I really like the results artists get with them looking very nice I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to buy a separate sharpener just for pastels because they break like crazy is there just two layers? Yeah. So those are the range of colours. I'm glad they've got some skin tone colours because that's mainly what I'll probably be doing with them is like portrait work. So a really nice range of colours. They've got a kneaded rubber with it. I didn't know you could use kneaded erasers with pastel pencils. And they've got a sharpener. So maybe the sharpener will be really good for pastels. But I'll have to see whether it is any good or whether I'll need to buy a better one. And they also give us a blending stump. There are a few nice extra additions to this. I was just expecting the pencils. So to go with the pastel pencils, I also got a paper that's meant to be really, really good to use with pastels. A lot of people use it. It's a really popular one. And that is the pastel matte paper. This comes in a few different colours. It's like a 12 sheet pack and you get white paper, sienna, brown and anthracite which I'm assuming is like black paper so you get a range of different colors and I think that's nice I wish you could have just chose packs that just have one type of color they might have them maybe I just didn't see them but a lot of people just use this I think because the pastels go over the paper so well it doesn't really matter what color you necessarily use you'll still be able to get the same result I suppose it just depends whether you want to use the colors as like a background but if you're just like filling every inch of the paper in it wouldn't really matter what paper you use and um, I'm assuming I mean I don't know but I'm just assuming and this is a hundred and seventy pound paper so that is really really thick that is thicker than the Archer's watercolor paper which is a hundred and forty pound so it's 360 GSM so this is going to be really thick I'm assuming it's going to have a texture very much like sandpaper if we open it up Okay, so now that it's open, let's just whiz through some of these paper colours. I want to feel how thick this paper is. Oh, wow, yeah, that's really thick. It's quite smooth, actually. I thought it'd be a lot more sort of textured. Wait, is that even? Wait, yeah, that is the first piece. Oh, there's a bit of tissue between each one. I thought it'd be a lot more textured for some reason. I thought it'd have more like a sandpaper sort of feel to it, a bit more rough, but it's like completely smooth. So here's the different colours. This is the sienna brown. This is the brown colour. And let's just whiz to this more grey black tone. I really do like the variety of colours. I am really surprised at the texture. It's almost just really smooth. Probably shouldn't be touching it too much. So yeah, those are the pastel things that I've got. I'm so excited to try them out. I don't know whether I'm going to dive straight into like a portrait with them or take it a bit more sort of cautiously and just try something small. But 
I love the work people can get with them and I like the fact that you can do light colours over dark colours which is something like you can't really do that much with coloured pencils, you can't really get them to show up too much so I think that I'm really going to enjoy using these. Okay, so now let's move on to the smaller packages. So let's go with this one first. A lot of you guys have been asking me for a long time whether I've tried out the Faber-Castell 9000 graphite pencil art set and you want me to like review them or ask kind of questions about them. And so I thought that I would get them. I needed some graphite pencils. I don't really have too many collections of graphite pencils and because I'm getting more into doing graphite work I thought I might as well get a really good set so I'm not going to open it up yet but it's got all of the different colours from 2H to 8B and so yeah I've got them and also I got some more black polychromos pencils I needed some more so I just thought I would get more of them because I go through them quite a lot with my sketches I've got three of them Onto this package, I'm pretty sure this is a paintbrush that I ordered, I can tell by the feel of it. So I went for a bit of a bigger paintbrush to kind of wash in areas of watercolour. So to do the washes in the background and stuff. I don't really have a very big watercolour brush. My biggest one isn't even that big, so I thought I definitely needed to get one that covers more area. A large area this is so velvety and smooth oh my god that is beautiful and I've heard these hold quite a lot of water as well so you don't have to keep going into your water and like replenishing it it like flows a lot of the color quite a lot so this is the oval one inch black velvet silver brush it's so smooth so I got that brush and those two brushes earlier so I wanted to get a fine liner brush and a slightly bigger one and then one that's really good for washes so that I have a few different sizes. So this was the refill leads that I ordered for that graphite mechanical pencil. These were the 0.5mm so they fit in nicely with that mechanical pencil and these were the 2B leads. Okay so this is the size 12. Again this is a slightly bigger one probably the second largest one that I ordered by the same make and last package so in the last package is just some Tombow Mono Eraser refills so I've got the Tombow Mono Eraser like pen thing I lost my other refills from before so I really needed to get some these are absolutely amazing when you want to get that tiny detail you can look how tiny that eraser is compared to my little finger it's so small so you can get extreme extremely detailed highlights using those erasers so again everything that i've gone through is linked in the description so that you can check it out but that's basically everything that i bought anyway guys that is it for this video i really hope you enjoyed it and if you did why not give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos but thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time bye everybody